While we've been doing our silly little jokes and sketches, you've been sitting there gasping, this is the greatest show I've seen in my life. Sexism in gaming. No, Frosk. How about sexy in gaming? Mmm. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody in the club, so come on, let's ride to the liquor store around the corner. The boy said he wants some gin and juice, but I really don't wanna. A white man. A white person. I'm clearly not a white man. I'm a black. Yeah, you want that fucking right. Non binary woman. Um, so it was pretty difficult for me. Hey, let's play a game. Let's pause Danny Lalonde's and see what kind of awful pauses and poses we actually get. Three, two, one. Because a lot of people did not take you. Uh-huh. Seriously, when I first joined in. Uh-huh. What do you think? Oh, there we got it. We got a winner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The breasts on the babe go round and round, round and round, round and round. The breasts on the babe go round and round, round the bench he comes. You see woke media, Homeland Security, Take Two Plus, whatever you call yourselves, the people that are being bankrolled by Homeland Security to carry out experiments on whether video games like the forthcoming Vindictus defying boobs will actually radicalize me. Nope, I'm just sitting here looking at the best pair of breasts since Sidney Sweeney along with my best pal Jeremy Renner. Uh, Jeremy, you can snap out of it now, dude. It was just a momentary lapse in concentration. Uh, Jeremy? Uh, Jeremy? Oh, shit. Her voice may be almost as important to gamers as Lara's double pistols, curves, and skimpy shorts. Kung Fu Hot Dog is a Kung Fu renegade cop. Now he must defeat the most evil Kung Fu master in the world. For a modern gaming audience. Get ready for a new world of unspeakable adventures. He says, Mommy, I like the way the lady runs. Get ready for a new world of unspeakable adventures never before shown in a motion picture. Get ready for Kung Fu Hot Dog. No retreat, no surrender. After that, gaming is becoming more mainstream and also more widely accepted in again like mainstream media. That has to be <laughs> the most ignorant talk. comment I've ever heard. Oh, now that video games are accepted in more mainstream. Where was this woman when GTA 5 came out? Where was this woman when the original Gears of War games were released back in the day from 2006 to 2011? But according to her highness, oh my God, video games are more accepting and more inclusive. This is an ignorant statement from a Gen Zer who thinks they're going to rewrite the white. Am I here? For the PlayStation 2, <laughs> the best entertainment system to hit the to hit the world. It's going to be great. Now oh, this is my nephew. My son's on his way. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's his birthday present. It's one of those things you've been waiting for forever. When it comes. Oh my God, Black Girl Gamers! It's a multi-platform, LGBT, and inclusive online gaming community of over 8,000 black women, notice no men or anybody of a Caucasian persuasion, that share a passion for gaming. Yet another ignorant statement, boys and girls. Because I remember going to a midnight launch for Max Payne 3 back in the day in Oxford Street, London and I saw people of other ethnicities there with me. We didn't stand and look at each other and go, hmm, you're a different color to me. You like a white man called Max Payne? None of that was exchanged. We were all there for the same reason and one reason only, to buy Rockstar Games' take on Max Payne, which is very good. Still one of my favorite games I like to play on Steam. This was a hell of a hangover. But over on the Black Girl Gamers website, some prominent brands have written about us. Well, why? Because they wouldn't do it on their own free will? And it's pretty cringe. 
I mean, just look at this. I mean, these women need all the beauty tips they can get. Speaking of which, J. Ann Lopez is the woman who is the founder of Black Girl Gamers. When? 2015, two years after BLM was formed. So I do wonder if there was a bit of a background movement to get everything unified as one. You do have to wonder, right? Now, this is an interesting article from GameRant.com. Cultural folklore and mythology are important. The Witcher 3 is one of Lopez's favorite video games, which she probably has never played, which has received praise for its gameplay, narrative and world design, along with winning a lot of Game of the Year awards, but has gotten backlash for having only, <gasps> oh no, don't say it, white characters. Lopez said that she knows The Witcher 3 is based predominantly on a Polish novel, or more specifically, Slavic mythology. So she thinks it would be unnecessary to change any of the characters. So far, so good. I thought, okay, Miss Lopez seems to understand that fundamental rule, but then we get this juicy portion right here. I'm not adverse to having white characters, I'm just annoyed at how prevalent they are. <sighs> Dear God. White chicks, white chicks. I wouldn't want to change an existing character that I can think of at the moment. One of my favorite games, Witcher 3, is predominantly based on a Polish novel. I have seen no need for me to change that main character. But don't worry, Miss Lopez, because for the next Witcher game... My name is Piotr Nielubowicz. I'm a member of the board and CFO at CD Projekt. I'm also personally involved in a range of environmental, social and government initiatives, ESG for short. What I want is more stories that are authentic to black and brown, non-white POC to be reflected in. But isn't black and brown already non-white? I don't want to necessarily have to race bend an existing character for me. That's not the epitome of representation. But then again, it's your burning desire, isn't it, Miss J. Ann Lopez, to do exactly what she claimed you don't want to do? It works in some ways, but I want some original content. Here's to you. Now, tell us how you're doing. And this article here from the Mary Sue, Forspoken, guess who were the consultants on that one? You got it, Black Girl Gamers. We are pleased to announce that Black Girl Gamers were hired as a paid consultant on Forspoken, which included having the opportunity to play a pre-release build of the game. And of course, what does Jayanne Lopez get for her troubles? A special thanks in the credits to give herself a little bit of clout. How cringeworthy is that? Over on Reddit, look at this article. To all my fellow black gamer girls and brown girls, because apparently there's a divide between black girls and brown girls, please share. I'm sorry with what's happening in the world right now. Uh, I know this is a different for everyone. Looking at the news and media, you see nothing but violence and what they want you to see, but that's not us. We are here because we love gaming. We all sit behind a screen and compete Peter that caring about race, gender or anything. We come here because we feel safe and equal. And maybe men don't make it easy on us, but we are better together. So exclude men, black lives matter. No, it doesn't, all lives matter. And right now we all need to hear that. If anyone needs to rant or get something off their chests, I'm sure someone in this community would love to listen. I would. Let's spread love. The mod team stands with you. Black Lives Matter. Let's take you back in time, ladies and gentlemen, to 2011. What a great year that was for video games and actually for the PlayStation 3 as well. Still to date, my favorite console from Sony. MotorStorm Apocalypse made by Evolution Studios. I think this is why people like Black Girl Gamers and Sweet Baby Inc. 
will never get this sort of exposure in terms of sitting down and talking about an actual game they developed from start to finish. But of course, this what is, is problematic racing. about this trailer? Urban oh my God, racing. white men, we can't the have them talking the about the video games. The physics this in this game are just monumentally insane. Looks, sounds, feels incredible to play. I love this bit. So what we're here to do awesome, is awesome. put a couple of diaries together that really try and explain the two major modes in Motorstorm Apocalypse. You can just see the passion in Matt Southern's face and the way he talks about the game. Can you imagine Black Girl Gamers being the same way? No, it will, it will all be about how they race swapped a white character, made them black, and it was just more beneficial and moved the story along. Remember back in the day of Alien 1979, Ridley Scott had wrote the part of Ripley for a male actor, but then at the last minute, switched it around and gave the reins over to Sigourney Weaver. And look how that turned out. When they actually admitted that quite a few years later, I was surprised, but I thought, you know what? It was such a well-written part anyway. And on the other side of things, John Carpenter, Assault on Precinct 13, 1976. When Carpenter wrote the part of Ethan Bishop for the late, great Austin Stoker, a very nice lieutenant. Thank you. A Trinidadian born actor. Do you think Carpenter sat down and thought to himself, hmm, am I going to infuriate the black people out there if I write this character? No, in fact, I would say that character is celebrated not just by the black folk, but by universal audience anyway, who never saw the color of the skin of Ethan Bishop. It was a guy caught in a very improbable and impossible situation, who, by the way, had help from the white convicts inside of Precinct 13. No messaging, just get on, get out, and we all go separate ways. It's an old story with me. I was born out of time. And as for you, black girl gamers, geeks of color, and other generic branded names out there, stay in your lane, and I'm happy to stay in mine. Especially when I can fantasize about having my head crushed between Cynthia the Rothrock's beautiful, gorgeous legs. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard of this video game called Unknown 9 Awakening? Awakening, the first preview from IGN. Look at this glorious ratio. 1,000 upvotes, 4,300 downvotes. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, come on, Jace, this is a video game preview. What could be the harm? Well, if you know what Unknown Nine Awakening is actually about and who's connected to it, it's the dreaded three letter word you've been waiting for, Sweet Baby Ink. or SBI for short. What a shame you can't change those first two letters or the first letter to FBI and call the feds and get that organization arrested. But courtesy of thatparkplace.com, well, it's official, Carutus or Cabrutus Rambo, the Sweet Baby Inc. Detected Curator, has added this game to their Steam Curator board. Why? Because in conjunction with Bandai Namco, a Japanese company who should know better to be involved with Sweet Baby Inc., unfortunately, they are with this game. It is terrible. Cabrutus shared the announcement on Twitter X writing, Unknown 9 Awakening has been confirmed as a game involved with SBI. Yikes. And of course, David Bagad, if you just look at him, of course, who is he? He's a brand content manager at Reflector Entertainment, also connected to or working with SBI. Oh no, Kim Belair, the story architect at Sweet Baby Inc. So these are the credits, folks, for this game. 
unknown awakening. Of course, if you want further evidence, this game is obviously guilty of other little refinements. Look at the lead in the role. Of course, again, this game is speaking diversity, this time Indian diversity, because that's an underrepresented, marginalized group of people, isn't it? Considering the fact that Bollywood is more bigger than Hollywood. But try telling Kim Belair and Mr. Bedard that they won't have it. They'll just throw you out. And apparently as well, on the Discord server for Sweet Baby Inc., anybody who dares to even mention this game's association with them are automatically booted off that server. So this is the actress, well, this is the supposed accurate facial capture of Anya Chalota. You know her as Yennefer from The Witcher, the global sensation series that none of us watched. Now, if you want to know who the actress is, that's her. Now, she's okay. She's not exactly my cup of tea. She's fairly attractive. She's got nice big eyes and uh, a nice big pair of eyebrows to match them. I mean, she could play an anime live action woman, actually, if she wanted to. But of course, this is what they've turned her into. Now, this is the young version of her. Um, and obviously, you won't go there on that one. But that's the actual final version of her there. And yes, they've captured some of her likeness, but you can tell they've kind of gone out of their way to still make her but ugly. I mean, that's just pretty awful. Now, whether that was a conscious decision from Anya herself, I don't know. But uh, let's have a look at the IGM preview. And I want to see what the comments say here, actually. Right, Sweet Baby Inc.'s CEO is part of the narrative writing for this game. Just in case people want to know. Interesting. And what do they actually reply with? Thanks. Won't be buying this or any other Sweet Baby Ink games. Thank you. This saves me time and money. You are doing God's work. Thanks. Dracula Moth. Thanks. I'm pre-ordering it now. Cry more. Well, then that's your problem, isn't it? Holy shit. New IP fans rejoice. Unknown 9 Awakening. It says Travis Northup. <laughs> oh, thanks, Travis. Can't wait to see this. The debut project from developer Reflector is coming this year. You might remember the teaser trailer from Gamescom a few years ago. No, I don't actually. Heads, and after taking a first look at an hour of gameplay, I left eager to get some hands on time with it and dive deeper. Any day we get to take a break from playing sequels and explore uncharted territory is a good day. And with some serious thought put into an all new universe and a psychically souped up. They really need to get their differentiation between thought and thought. With some interesting combat abilities, this third person action adventure definitely has potential. The sad thing is, what I've seen in this gameplay so far, it looked okay. I won't lie. But now you know SBI are involved with it, you're like, oh, hang on a minute. You know, this, uh, look, if you want to know what the scenario for this game actually is, I'll get that up for you right now. Let's have a quick look. Unknown 9 Awakening Lore. As you walk Haruna's path, you will collide with warning secret societies. Explore the depths of parallel reality and this realm's potent energy to outsmart and outfight those who stand in your way. Before embarking on this epically mysterious adventure. Make sure to familiarize yourself with the video game's lore essentials. Courtesy of Kim Belair. Okay, let's get back to this quickly. With me and watch your violent schemes unfold. In the demo I saw, this cheeky tactic accounted for most of the action and made for some interesting shenanigans like one encounter where snipers on a ledge were possessed and made to shoot at their own comrades below. Yeah, which has been done before in the game Syndicate, which is a really good game actually. So that's not a new mechanic, it's been around for a while. Interestingly, you're also given free reign to use any abilities of the troops you're controlling, like the powerful ground pound ability of the tanky bruiser enemy, 
or the forward dash attack of the spear-wielding foot soldiers. If you'd rather not play Puppeteer, Unknown 9 Awakenings also has some stealth options, where you can use your powers to become invisible well, for a Well, the whole point of a video game, you want to play as much as you can, don't you? You don't want to control other NPCs in the game, air. do you? Sneaking up behind enemies to take them out has your kindly lady snatch the soul from her victim's body and tear it asunder. Oh, I mean, they're not being funny, guys. I mean, you know, this is rated 16. Uh, from Peggy, so you're not really going to see groundbreaking, blood-shattering violence, are you? It kind of it's kind of a bit meh, very mid. What else do we have here? Each of these approaches has their own skill trees too, so you per sleeve that I didn't get to see just yet. Yes, and I know this game is meant to be a very close comparison cousin of Forspoken. Again, at least with that game, the actual female lead looked like the actress Ella Belinska. In this one, I've kind of bastardized Miss Chalorta's looks, which is, uh, you know, is par for the course these days. Will occupy. As a young woman from India named Haruna, you discover your psychic abilities and begin to investigate a paranormal parallel reality known as the Fold, from which your powers are presumably derived. And that all plays into the existing lore that's being set up in the supplemental content, including laying the groundwork for various factions you'll encounter in the game. I'm very curious to know if the country of India will have any opposition about this video game. In other words, is there anything in the video game that perhaps might offend folks up there? Oh, you've done this and you shouldn't be taking the name of so-and-so or a deity into vain for a video game. So I'm kind of curious actually, because at the moment everything's to be, well, sweet FA, but really we don't know what's going to unfold, do we? So quite interestingly enough, I'm curious to see how this game, if it's going to appeal to a broad audience, and I'm sure like Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan on Disney+, Plus, not many Indian people actually watched it. Well, demographically speaking, so I can't see that this game, Unknown Awakening 9, is going to generate a similar kind of response or reaction. And it's pretty meh and pretty mid in terms of me getting excited about this. I mean, again, you could play Remember Me, which I think is based on Ellen Page back in the day when she was Ellen Page. I'm thinking of another game perhaps, but uh, that's where my mind transfixes to. Bear with me, folks, because I need to eat some crazy lunch soon. So yes, that is it. Another sweet baby stink exclusive, courtesy of yours truly. I mean, sweet baby ink, no matter what damage control you try to do, it keeps getting worse and worse. Even Black Girl Gamers, oh my God, even they're crawling and slithering out of their covens and trying to do damage control, saying, oh, we're being victimized here. We're not doing anything wrong, despite the fact they're looking for black female content creators to destroy and annihilate that white-based Dungeons & Dragons IP. And on that one, ladies and gentlemen, if you were me and you enjoyed my video today, hit the like button below, smash that subscribe button, and I'll check you out, checking me out on the next video. Next time on Kung Fu Hot Dog.